Hey guys, hope you're well. So, it occurred to me that since I built this new desk setup, I haven't actually made a video explaining everything in it, and some of you have been asking for it, so here it is. My 2021 productivity and gaming desk setup. I will try to have everything linked in the description below. I suppose every desk should start with the desk itself, and many of you have probably seen this desk before. It's made up of three main elements, all from IKEA. The tabletop is a kitchen countertop which goes by the name of Carlby, but they do have the same desk with other finishes as well. I personally really like this dark wood finish, so that's the one I chose. It's a solid desk and is quite thick, which means I don't have to use any leg to support it in the middle. Do note, however, that there is a longer version of this, and if you get that, I would recommend a leg. But with the shorter version, it's fine without. The desk is standing on two drawer units called Alex, and I chose the dark grey option as I thought it would match the dark tabletop, and I think it does. We'll get into what's inside the drawer units later, but I love all the storage I have now. This is the biggest reason I upgraded from my old desk. To store all my junk, I mean, um, treasures. Behind the desk is a 2 meter long LED strip from Philips Hue. It works great for mood lighting, but just also lighting in general. I love the contrast it provides and it helps my monitor to pop out from the background. So let's take a look at what's on the desk. We'll go from right to left. At the edge is this lamp also from IKEA. It's just here to add some extra coziness and at that it does a great job. Next to the lamp is my PC which I built around 6 months ago. I won't bore you with all the specifications but I will have them listed in the description below. The case is called the NZXT H1 and I have custom painted it orange because, well, I like orange. I love the way this case looks, however it seems that this case may currently be a fire hazard and so NZXT have stopped selling it for now until they can come up with a fix, so that's fun. In any case, I haven't had any issues so far, so fingers crossed there will be a total lack of fires going forward. On top of the case sits this plant. Don't know what it's called, but I'll put it on the screen. I highly recommend it if you want a real plant that's nice and easy to take care of. A bit of water once a week and it stays happy. Moving on, next to the PC I keep this small Anchor USB hub. I've had it for many years and it serves me well. My only complaint is that its USB cable is very short, but otherwise it's made of metal and looks nice. Then we come to the monitor. This is a Dell Ultrawide, no point saying the model name because it's several years old, but it gets the job done and it leaves my desk looking much cleaner than it would with two screens. Although, I wish it had a better cable management system. I don't like seeing cables and with this hole through the base it feels like my cables are on display all the time. Above it lives a webcam, because in this world we live in currently there are a lot of online meetings I participate in and so it's a requirement. It's a Logitech C920 Pro, again several years old but it works and gets the job done. Next we have a lamp, it's from, you guessed it, Ikea, and it's called the Antiphony, but I don't think they sell this anymore, at least not where I live, which is a shame because it's a rather nice lamp. Hanging from it are some small sentimental items. Moving down, we get to my audio interface, the Scarlett 2i2 second generation. I'd recommend this to anyone who's looking into getting an affordable but reliable and solid audio interface. It's small, can take two inputs, and is powered over USB. My microphone, that we'll get to in a minute, is always plugged in so it's ready for action, but I only give it power when needed. Next, we have a super cheap wireless charger from Amazon which does the job. It's not a fast charger, but with this design it's impossible to put your phone on it and get the placement wrong. And next up is this salt lamp which has been made spherical. I think it's supposed to represent a planet or something. Anyway, it's from Amazon, wasn't too expensive and I think it looks nice. Then we have another plant. I can also highly recommend this one for those of you not blessed with green fingers. It can take some neglect and still look healthy. Next we have the Rode PSA1 microphone arm which works great for me. I wouldn't recommend buying anything cheaper than this. I did have a cheap one for a while but the squeaking and general roughness made me upgrade and I've been happy ever since. On it lives my voiceover microphone. It's the SE Electronics 2200A Mark II C and it comes with this handy shock mount as well as a pop filter. I have nothing bad to say about this microphone. If you're in the market for one and have around $200 to spend, I would highly recommend it. 
Next is the IKEA Symphonisk speaker, which lives on the edge of my desk for now, but may soon be moving to a new home on the shelf above. No, it's not as good as a Sonos Play 1, but for half the price, I can't complain. And it works with the whole Sonos ecosystem, so it's a great way to flesh out your distributed home audio without emptying your wallet. On it rests my SteelSeries Arctis 9X, which I still believe is a great headset, but if you don't need Bluetooth connectivity, I would probably just buy the 7X, which is essentially the same headset, but newer and without Bluetooth. And as we wrapped around the desk, we missed out on the PC peripherals. So from left to right, we have the Razer Tartarus V2 Chroma. This is a gamepad specifically for PC gaming, and I can't recommend this enough to anyone who wants to up their game or just get more comfortable. Then we have my keyboard, which is a Keychron K2 wireless mechanical keyboard. And whilst it looks great, there are a few reasons why I don't think this is for everyone. I've done a full review, which you can check out if you want to know why. When it comes to mice, I switch between two models. For first-person shooters and general use, I like the glorious Model O. It's super light and has one of the best sensors on any mouse. Again, I've reviewed it, but the conclusion is, it's sweet. For MMOs, I use the Razer Naga. I think this is the 2014 edition still going strong, and all of those extra buttons are very useful if you can get used to them. All of these are under some random mouse mat I bought on Amazon, which does have an RGB strip going around it, but I've stopped using that because, as I said before, I don't like cables, and this one was particularly annoying because it comes out on the side, which just makes no sense to me. The final piece of the puzzle is my chair, which unfortunately you guys can't buy because it's like two decades old, but it's from a company called RH, they make ergonomic office chairs, and the closest model they seem to have is probably the one called Logic, which costs a lot of money, but I bought it used for $80 and I'm super happy with it. So, we'll finish the video by looking at what's in my desk storage. Well, my vision was for it to be organized and aesthetic, but in reality, it's chaos. It's got everything from supplements like vitamin D3 to various grippers, to tools, to storage media, to cables, to recording equipment, to documentation and filing, to a Game Boy Color. Hope I win some points with that one. So yeah, you get the idea. It holds a lot of stuff, and whilst I do wish it were a bit more organized, at least it's all hidden in these drawers. And that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time.